For the word to work and to reach its destination, it has to be activated. It's got the truth of God in it, but it has to be activated for you to experience it. And it is activated by response where you do something. If there is no action, there is no activation. Now it's alive, but it's not working for you. It is the action that activates it. Verse 22, but prove yourselves to be doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. And once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. He says, you can be tricked or you will be tricked or deluded is his word if all you do is hear it. If all you do is hear the word, you will be, we will be duped. We will find no benefit of scripture. We'll find no change in our lives. We'll find no progress. Not because we didn't hear it, but because we only heard it. He introduces us to this thing of the mirror. He says, do not be like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. You've heard me use the somewhat humorously uh, his discussion, the word man there in the Greek, it's the word male. Don't be like a male in a mirror who looks at his face and quickly turns away. And you've heard me say that's because women don't look in the mirror and quickly turn away. Okay? Women hang out in multiple mirrors. Okay? There's the first mirror in the bathroom that they look at to see how messed up stuff got last night. Then there's the vanity mirror. Okay? Then there's the half mirror that they use to look back at the vanity mirror. <laughs> then there's the full body mirror. Then there's the car mirror. And then there's the mirror in your purse. So there's mirrors. Because women don't look in the mirror and quickly turn away. That's why he says the man who beholds his natural face. So if there's a man in here with a compact, we need to talk after the service. <laughs> Men don't go around with lipstick all day and doing this all day. I mean, women hang out in the mirror. He says, when it comes to God's word, don't be like a man, be like a woman. So let, 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 let's help here. I want you to do me a favor. Everybody in the room, do me a favor. I want you to now, as you sit here, look at your face. I want you to look at your face. Are you seeing your face? You're not seeing your face because you can't look at your face. The only way you know what you look like is because of a mirror. The mirror tells you what you look like. Now, you may think you Holly Berry or Denzel, but the mirror <laughs> will tell you the truth. In biblical days, there did not exist glass mirrors. They did not have glass mirrors. They didn't exist. Glass mirrors are mirrors with silver in them, and that's where you get the reflection back. And that was not created. And if you go back to look at the movies back in biblical days, you won't see them with glass mirrors if it's an authentic movie because it didn't exist. Brass mirrors. Use brass. And they had to get the light to shine on the on the brass, against the brass, and they had to keep manipulating it until they got a good reflection from the light of the sun or from the candle to shine against the brass, and they had to have the brass at the right place in order to see what they look like. This is why he says in verse 25, but the one who looks intently at the perfect law. In other words, the word will not reach its destination if you glance at it, you must graze in it. The word, the word does not do its job because you look at it. The idea is to see your face. When you go to a mirror, you go to a mirror to see your face. 
That's, you want to look, look at you. No matter what you think you look like, if it's a legitimate mirror, it's not going to lie to you. It's going to say your hair's messed up, there's boo-boo in your eyes. You know, it's, it's not going to lie to you. It's going to tell you the truth. He says, I want you to manipulate the word of God until I show you the real you. You may think you all that in a bag of chips, but when you face my word, I'm going to show you your spiritual boo-boo. I'm going to show you your messed up hair. I'm going to reveal you to you based on what the mirror shows, not what you think you are. He says he is to look at his face in a mirror. He is to manipulate that until he sees himself in the word. Until you see you because the Holy Spirit God points you to you because you've hung out in the mirror like a woman, not like a man. And one of the ways you get to hang out, he says, is by becoming a doer of the word, verse 22, and not merely a hearer. For the word to work and to reach its destination, it has to be activated. Now, I talked to you about this before, those of us back in the day that still have hair, the jury, jury girl, jury girl. You had to buy a curl activator. You had to go buy a curl activator. Because if you didn't activate the curl, mm, stuff would be all dried up. Okay? It would dry up. Now, the chemicals were in there, but they, they had to be activated. So if you got a jerry curl, you, you did curl activator to keep, it, to keep it shining, to keep it soft. You had to activate it. The word is the word. It's got the truth of God in it, but it has to be activated for you to experience it. And it is activated by response where you do something. If there is no action, there is no activation. Okay, let me say it again. If there is no action, the word of God lies dormant. Now, it's alive, but it's not working for you. It's not working in you or me or us because it has not been activated by action. It is the action that activates it. So you could say amen till you blue in the face. If there is no action, there is no activation. And so he says, be a doer of the word and not merely a hearer only. Treat the word like a crock pot, not like a microwave. A microwave is designed to do something quick, to heat it up quick to get it out quick. But if you notice something, if you do it quick in the microwave, it gets cold quick. Because you just rush that thing. But now a crock pot, where you're letting it hang out there for hours and hours, and it's saturating itself all in there because it's becoming a part of it. It's not just giving you a, a top heat in it. What many Christians want is a Sunday microwave, not an all-week crock pot. Let me ask you a question. Most people, or many people, eat big meals on Sunday. They go out or cook a big meal. You got a big meal on Sunday. So let's say today you go, you stuff yourself. You are just jam-packed with some great food. But you don't eat again until next Sunday. You're not going to be healthy. I don't care how good the meal is on Sunday. If Sunday's the only time you eat, you're going to be in bad shape. Because a Sunday meal doesn't sustain a life movement. And a Sunday sermon doesn't sustain a life movement. The word of God must become part of the life. That's why you see Psalms talk about meditating on it, thinking about it, meandering in it. 
Because it's become, see, that takes it down. And when you are acting on it, you're actually reminding yourself about it because the action is telling you you're doing something based on something that the word taught. This is why we put the study guide out there to give you something, a tool every week to keep you in different verses and to keep you rehearsing and to keep you thinking about it. Because I am not, I am not um, naive. I'm not naive. Meaning, I preach approximately 42 out of 52 Sunday mornings a year on Sundays. It's 42 out of 52, okay? I know if I come to most of you next Sunday (laughs) and ask you what I preached about this Sunday, you're going to say, uh, 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 something about the Bible. uh, You know what I mean? I'm not naive. I'm not even going to remember what I preached about. What I'm saying is, it's easy for the word to get lost. Because you got an evil person that wants it lost, and you got a fake culture that doesn't want you to take it seriously. So you got, got an evil person, you got a fake culture, because it wants to deny you real life. It wants to deny us real life. And because it wants to deny us real life, it keeps us distracted with fake culture so that the real life of the word does not sit down, seep down and do the job it was designed to do.